Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by the garden today. We're going to plant some nasturtium. So this is a jewel mix and I just love these because they grow so good here in Florida and they don't require much nutrients at all. So we're going to go over planting these and how to sprout them. These are kind of difficult because what you need to do is take a little file and shave them. So these I shaved, these little four guys. And this little one I left so I can show you. What I do is just, I have concrete brick outside so I just take the seed scrape them against. You want to go all sides, scrape them against, and file them down a little bit. And that's going to make them sprout. If you don't file them, they will tend not to sprout for you, these nasturtiums. They just need to be rubbed down. So after we go ahead and file each side of the seed down, what you want to do is go ahead and plant them in some soil. Some really poor soil. I mean, these don't require much much soil at all um, much fertile soil to grow in at all I should say and they don't require much nutrients they'll actually burn and won't produce or grow without um, with too much nutrients so let's go take a look in the garden bed and see what we got sprouting this is a little nasturtium tote I started and we have three in here so the two on the ends I planted a couple weeks ago and the one in the middle there just sprouted a few days ago I haven't given any nutrients but one time at the beginning of the growing season at a diluted strength halfway with my Dynagrow grow system there is a grow there's a bloom there's a mag pro I have a video on the nutrients I use from Dynagrow I'll post it below we did a little unboxing from them but you can see that they're just really good they, they grow so good without nutrients haven't given them any nutrients yet so let's go over to this garden bed here we had some uh, green beans growing with our coleus in front of our coleus and lemon palm there but the green beans just didn't do too good we've been getting a lot of rain and a lot of fungus here in central Florida because you know the rain with the humidity and the, um, the heat it just causes a lot of fungus for us here so we have a couple of nasturtiums popping out which let me show you where they're at there's one right there can see he's starting to pop there's another one right there and here's another little fella so we're gonna go ahead and interplant some around these and you just want to move the soil around to go ahead and plant them I have three here we're gonna put another one here so you just want to bury them just a little bit you want to bury you always want to bury the seed to the size height the seed is. So, you know, if it's a tiny, tiny lettuce seedling, you just wanna barely lay it on top of that soil. If it's like lavender, stuff like that, you wanna barely lay it on top of the soil. Beans, you can go ahead and put it a quarter of an inch down to an inch down, cause that little green bean seed's pretty big. And you just wanna press down, you wanna keep this soil pretty moist throughout the whole germination process. And then once it starts growing and popping out of the soil, you can then go ahead and back off a little bit with the water and just water as soon as that soil oil dries out. We're going to go ahead and just make a nice nasturtium bed over here since I think they're, they'll do pretty good during the summertime. I know in California they grow these in the summer. Here in Florida we're, we're a lot different than California with the humidity and the rain, stuff like that. We don't have a dry climate. It's not dry and hot. It's dry and wet all year long pretty much for us here except for the winter. So we're just going to plant them a good foot apart and let them rock out make a nice little nasturtium bed they're just flowering plants next to our calicoes our succulents here and that's it for this guys i am not gonna do anything else to this side of the garden bed we're just gonna go ahead and grow these little fellas here make a nice little garden bed with them and uh, fill it in they'll fill in the garden thank you so much for joining me if you have any questions or comments leave them below i'd love to help you in any way possible to start your plants if they're not sprouting on you that's probably why you haven't filed them down filing them down is really important now you don't want to file them down too much to the point you're exposing the inside of the seed but you want to file them down enough to break that coating on the outside open and just uh, get it so to where that water can seep in and make that seed start to germinate or it won't germinate right we have a lot growing here in the garden I'm not going to be growing too much other than coleus, succulents, nasturtiums, peppers. Uh, we have our zinnias, which you can see are getting so big. Zinnias grow like three feet in height. Look how big they're getting. They're just growing really good. And they are pest and disease resistant here in Central Florida. They're just not getting any diseases at all, which I'm so happy about. You can see we have a lot more blooms here to come. You want to cut the spent blooms off. You can definitely save the flower head dry them out and then uh, pluck them them zinnia seeds out of there each zinnia seed will be in each flower petal i have a video on that too you can 
check out as well if you need to. We have our peppers growing, which we're starting to get some pepper action here. The only thing we can really grow here in Central Florida is peppers, okra, sunflowers, zinnias, coleus. Um, let's see, the nasturtiums will do okay, the succulents will do okay here. Have a zinnia in there as well. We just planted some peppers up. We have more. Um, we have a morning glory here, which these morning glories, these tight, they, they say they're meant to grow in the summertime. So we're going to try them out here. We're going to plant, since we had green beans here before, we're going to do flowers in this one. And then since we had flowers in this one before, we're going to do another type of flower mixture with some green beans, some vegetables. You always want to rotate your planting. So whether you had flowers or veggies in there, you know, you don't want to plant the same thing in the container two years in a row, like beans. I had beans in here all last year and this fall to winter. Well, this summer I can't put beans in here because the ones I did aren't doing too good. They're just sucking up the same nutrients out of the soil. So it's good to interplant and um, change up that, that cycle. This we just had the big sunflower growing out of, which I left the stalk because we're going to trellis something on it. We're going to grow like a green bean or something and use this flower stalk, this big sunflower stalk, as a trellis. Just wrap it around there. I planted some green beans in here. We have three Bush Blue Lake 274s, so we're going to let those sprout because we didn't plant beans in this container. We planted beans in the other one in front of it. So we'll do good with the beans in that container. I'm just going throughout the garden today pruning up since we've been raining a lot. Everything needs kind of nutrients. Grow, whether it's grow or bloom with my Dynagro, they're gonna get nutrients. This little watermelon got some Mag Pro today because we're growing a nice little watermelon on her. She's nice and green. We've been feeding quite a bit. Watermelon are heavy, heavy feeders, so we put earthworm castings in there, homemade compost. We moved all that uh, cypress mulch to the side, we put it in the middle, and then we covered it back up after massaging it in the soil. I have a video on that as well. Let's go over to the blueberry and just check out a few things in this video because I just don't want to do another separate video since we're out here already looking at our plants. This is my blueberry, doing really good. She's growing really big for us here. She stopped blooming. She produced all her blueberries that she had for the fall. We usually bloom in the winter and fall here into the beginning of spring. It depends. We had a late season this season, so we bloomed into the summer a little bit. But you can see how much growth she has on her now. So we're going to start trimming her up. I'm going to do a video on her, how to trim it up after it stops blooming. And then we have our raspberry here. We planted some corn back there. We pulled our eggplant, our one eggplant, and we're gonna plant another one. But I already have another eggplant. So we're, we have one more eggplant, and then we're gonna plant another one. These carrots are doing pretty good. They're almost done. These are the purple variety. Let's go in there so we can see them popping up. You can see they're popping up. They're almost ready. Not quite. Let's pull one, see where we're at. So they're not quite ready yet. You can see. They're almost there though. You can see how beautiful this carrot is. Look at this carrot. It's a purple carrot. Once it goes all the way down to that bottom, you know it's ready. So we're good. I mean, we can pluck carrots earlier if we want to. They'll actually be a lot more um, sweeter if you pluck them early. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you need any help on anything I'm growing here or want me to do a video on anything, let me know. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you next time out in the garden. Bye-bye.